<laughs> Here it is. The big one. Hello, welcome back to Simon's Rants. I'm Simon, and today I'm giving my on second thought on Batman and Robin. This is your spoiler warning, so if you haven't seen this movie yet, what rock have you been under? Go see this amazing beautiful movie right now and then come back and we can talk about it then. So in case you don't know, the plot of Batman and Robin literally doesn't matter at all because every single decision that went into making this movie was the wrong one. This is one of the best, so bad it's good movies ever made. From directing to writing to casting, yes, deliberately casting Arnold Schwarzenegger as Mr. Freeze, every decision was the wrong one. But he was so confident that Arnold Schwarzenegger would be the perfect Mr. Freeze that he told Arnold, I will not make this movie unless you are in it. Arnold probably should have just said, that's a good thing, don't make it. But no, he did make it. And he also casted Uma Thurman as Poison Ivy, <sighs> because Uma Thurman is the most beautiful woman to ever live. <sighs> So, yes, all right, let's actually review this instead of just feeding into the mass hysteria. What went wrong with this movie exactly? So here's my theory. There was a lot of risky decisions that could have gone horribly wrong in the making of Batman Forever, made by Joel Schumacher. He went in a completely different direction from the dark and creepy vibe that Tim Burton was going with to a colorful, exciting, goofy style. And all these decisions seemingly paid off because the movie was a hit and people were fans of it. Not everybody loved it, but it did really well among audiences and did extremely well in marketing deals like toys and stuff like that. So when the toy companies came to him and asked for him to make a new movie as soon as possible, of course he obliged. And so this movie takes all of those decisions that were already made, but made somewhat hesitantly, like I don't know if this is the right decision to add some nipples to the suits and to add some goofiness to the characters and add some campiness to the acting and it ran with it because there was obvious confirmation that obviously those were all the things that made that movie great right so he took all of those risky decisions and turned it up to 11 all of the things that were bad about batman forever became the focal point of batman and robin and therefore shown through even more as being awful and terrible so all the things that were actually good about Batman Forever, which is a short list, but includes Jim Carrey's comedy, Chris O'Donnell's good portrayal of Robin, and a couple other things were all lost in this movie in favor of the things that were actually what Joel Schumacher wanted to do. There was no Jim Carrey in this, obviously. Chris O'Donnell became a more Joel Schumacher-y mess of a character, and you replace Val Kilmer, who was already bad enough, with George Clooney. I am not a Val Kilmer fan. I'm not. In fact, I actually like George Clooney more than I like Val Kilmer. But as Batman? No. Val Kilmer at least put in an attempt to play Batman. He put in a valid attempt. Was it good? No. He smiled with the cowl on. That's a big no-no that I will forever hate him for. But he did at least try. George Clooney was George Clooney on Halloween, I guess. Cause he put no effort at all. He just, hey Freeze, I'm Batman. Hi Freeze, I'm Batman. No, you're just George. Hi George. <laughs> Hi, George. There's no way, especially this universe's version of Batman, who goes on live TV and does interviews and talks to people, there's no way nobody in Gotham doesn't know that he is Bruce Wayne. <laughs> he just goes up and does an interview and like, Hey, how you doing? Yeah, I saved the day today. I also, uh, you might want to look at Wayne Enterprise on the stock market because it is going up. Also, here's my credit card that I'm going to show to everybody. It definitely doesn't have my legal name on it. Maybe, wait, does it? Does the credit card actually just say Batman on it? It probably does. I can't decide which is funnier. Showing people his secret identity because of his credit card or his credit card just saying Batman on it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there is a scene in this movie where he literally is in a bidding war over Poison Ivy with Robin. There's this whole uh, fundraiser event where you throw money at a model to spend the night with her or whatever, and then that money goes toward a good cause, I suppose. Sure, maybe, I don't know. I didn't pay enough attention to know what the money was going for. Anyway, Batman pulls out a credit card. A bat credit card, which has the expiration date of forever as a cute little reference to Batman Forever. 
Um, but I have a couple of points on that. An expiration date being forever means that it's forever expired. Doesn't mean that it's never going to expire. It means that it's already expired. Also, why wouldn't you call Batman Forever Batman and Robin because it's the one that introduces Robin and call this one Batman Forever because it feels like it never ends. Calling this one Batman and Robin makes no sense because it's also got Batgirl in it. You should have called it Batman and Robin and Batgirl. Then throw in Mr. Freeze and Poison Ivy for good measure. My god, this movie is so bad. It's so bad and so nonsensical because it was, I think, intentional. It was based on the Adam West Batman series, which was intentionally campy and intentionally goofy. So if this one was trying to pay homage to that in a serious way, they didn't realize what they were doing. And I honestly still just have more questions because it's obviously not a well-made movie, but there was a lot of money that went into making this movie. There was very high production here, yet there's moments of obviously bad special effects, and I don't even mean CGI, I mean like just the icicles on the car when Mr. Freeze freezes Gotham, and then as things start to melt again, people thaw and come back to life. And Commissioner Gordon is getting out of his car and he opens the door and there's icicles on his car that are obviously made out of rubber. Rubber! Why? Why wouldn't you just use plastic? Like, rubber is completely the wrong thing to do. You're gonna open the door and it's gonna be going whoop, 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 whoop. <laughs> That's gonna get taken out of context. It's just, this movie is such a masterpiece of horror. Every decision was wrong, and I understand that it was all motivated by money and by toy sales. You can tell because they changed costumes, like, a million times in this movie for no reason, you add new characters because now two villains isn't enough, you need three, and everything is designed to be like, look, this is a toy, you want it, right? And yeah, based on the designs of how they look, they look like awesome toys, but when it's supposed to be a serious movie that adults will enjoy, no, no adult wants that. No adult wants Bane dressed up as a pink gorilla. I don't think any kids want that either, and if they do, Smack him! Bane was a fairly recent villain in the DC Universe. He came out in 93, I think it was, and this is 97. He hasn't been around that long. So obviously the studio, thinking that it would get the money because of the popularity of the character, are pushing for Bane to be in this movie. But they obviously didn't do any research on Bane the character because Bane is supposed to be the strongest villain, even stronger than Killer Croc, and he's supposed to be the smartest villain, even smarter than Joker. That's why he actually beats Batman. And in Instead of that, he's not even Bane. He doesn't have remotely the right personality. This is not Bane. This is Bomb Bane, as I like to call him, because literally all he says is, Bomb. 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 <laughs> Two completely different characters. Maybe they're cousins, but they're not the same guy. I have secondhand embarrassment watching this movie because it's like watching the absolute worst decisions being made in front of your eyes. You can tell that there was many crossroads in this movie and every time they're like, should I go right? Nah, left, left, left. And in this wonderful analogy, left means wrong because it's not right. God. I should start scripting these a little. <laughs> it's not like all of the actors in this movie are horrible. Yes, whoever played Bane was, Arnold Schwarzenegger was, but George Clooney is a decent actor normally. Chris O'Donnell put in a great performance in just the last Batman movie, and Uma Thurman, although I am not remotely a fan of her acting ability, is considered a good to decent actress, and has been in some very good movies like Pulp Fiction. And so you can't even really necessarily blame the actors, it's obviously the script writing to a certain extent, but even more so, the directing. Because the director chooses the tone of the movie through teaching the actors what he wants from a scene, making them do it a certain kind of way, and ultimately choosing the clips that get put into the movie. There's a million takes probably out there of George Clooney probably putting in a slightly better effort, and I bet you that Joel Schumacher said, no, I'm going with this take, I'm going with this take, I'm going with this take, I'm taking the worst ones possible because it's my vision. You can definitely make fun of George Clooney for this, but it's like, I don't know how much was his fault because 
because every actor has bad takes. Every actor does. Usually you've got like a warm-up take where you're like, you're kind of acting it kind of bland just to kind of feel it out. And then you usually have one that's extremely over the top. You usually go both ends of the spectrum and then try and meet in the middle. That's how a lot of actors work. My theory is Joel Schumacher said, wow, they went really over the top. I'm taking it. And then he saw George Clooney go completely emotionless and said, wow, look at that dark knight. Look at that brooding man. That one. <laughs> Instead of, you know, remotely trying to do the right decision at any point in time, probably. I haven't even gotten to Alicia Silverstone's character in this because it's just another decision that's obviously motivated by money. We want girls to buy toys, so we're going to get a girl villain and a girl good guy and make them dress up in outfits that will look good on a Barbie doll and then make them fight. That will get girls interested in that movie. You can tell that every decision whether how bad or not it was, was motivated by money. And that is why this movie sucks. It's not a necessarily bad director's bad vision. It was, but the real reason that it was this bad instead of more like Batman Forever was because it was motivated by money and not art. And that's why it's really so bad because I know Joe Schumacher is not good, but he's definitely better than what this was. This wasn't anybody's artistic vision. This was a plan to make money through McDonald's, through Hasbro, and through whoever else they were working with. That's what this movie was. It was not a movie. It was a commercial. A really long, really bad, really campy commercial. The point is, this movie is so bad that there is at least one major wrong decision in every scene. At least one. There's a million things that I could talk about this movie that I can't get into right now. I'm just, I'm just hitting the tip of the iceberg. Ha <laughs> ha! Ice! Nice to meet you, in case you didn't know. There's a lot of puns. So I know there's a million things wrong with this movie that are just laughably terrible. So let me know in the comments below your favorite part about this movie and how so bad it's good it is. And also, if you're new here, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.